Hi everybody, this is Mythic IJ and today I'm going to talk about some new Godzilla 2014 sequel information. So yeah, first of all we're going to talk about um, some new news from like three days ago all the way till now, today. And first of all, we'll start off with the first, uh, I believe it's called Early Keyframe Art for the Godzilla movie, of course. Now, I'm not sure if this is fan art or if this is official. I think it might be official because another thing that I will talk about that's called uh, Director Gareth Edwards Reveals Seven Godzilla Secrets. One of the secrets is similar to one of these pictures. I won't tell you, you know, you know yourself. So yeah, as you see there, that's one, that's one picture of the two early keyframe arts. So as you see there, you see Godzilla shooting blue electricity, not a beam, electricity. That's very, very interesting. I mean, Godzilla's design right here doesn't look so great. The face looks weird. It just looks very awkward, this design right here. I really do not really, uh, I really do not like it. And I really prefer the atomic breath that we saw in the uh, final movie instead of this one. But, you know, at least Gareth Edwards thought of using something blue that will shoot out of this new Godzilla's mouth which you know it's very honorable of him next thing right here this one's very interesting we see this uh, we see Godzilla and his horrific design near uh, Alcatraz near Alcatraz and you actually see another kaiju now that kaiju what is that other kaiju now if you actually notice Okay, so of course there's two legs that's holding up the body, of course, but you can't see maybe because of these, like, of the ocean or something. Then we have two arms that are in front, and then we have some in the middle, like, hanging. So that means it has a total of six legs. So is this the, as many people call it, Vishnu creature from the 2012 Comic-Con? That's what, that's what's most people are talking about and are speculating but even though it has six legs I don't really think so because the centipede creature had around like five legs each side that's a bunch and right here it looks like this is more of a bipedal like creature while the centipede creature looked like a centipede creature a centipede this is not look like a centipede this looks like an upgrade of maybe Angerus Maybe Baragon, more most likely Angerus. But overall, this design is actually very nice. We could probably see this one in the, in the sequel, but you never know. Very interesting. It's very spiky, actually. Very cool. And I wonder why Alcatraz Island wasn't actually in the film itself. I guess not enough t t um, screen time. I I'm not really sure. But yeah, that's that. Next thing, director Gareth Edwards reveals seven secrets for the Godzilla film. <coughs> Now, I won't read what the article says. I'll just read the titles of them. So, how they set up the pieces is one of the secrets. Another secret is the decision to kill Cranston's character, which is, of course, Joe Brody, and which is um, the father of Ford Brody. And originally, right here, I read a little bit right here, and they were actually, you know, they tried doing the story where Joe Brody actually lives but it didn't work out they said that there was nothing to do for him you know nothing else for him to do or then it'll be kind of silly so I guess uh, Brian Cranston did his part next part is the Easter eggs and one of the Easter eggs most that's shown here is um, Gary Edwards says in the classroom when there's a power cut which is in the Jinjira scene they're watching a video about how a cocoon hatches on the TV when it cuts off on the walls, there's a life cycle of butterflies. And then another thing that he put is, and at the end of the movie, when Ford gets on the boat in San Francisco, the G, I mean the boat, excuse me, has Go Will Tours on the side. And the Japanese word for Godzilla is Gojira. I think that was a typo. And Jira means whale. So I think that's why they call it Jan Jira. Anyways, means whale. So it's like saying Godzilla Tours. Another thing that I mentioned is that and those origami piece cranes in the classroom 
with just a nice detail that our department put in. Then once I saw them, I thought, you know what we should have done? There should have been mutos up there. Substantially, that would have been good. I keep asking the visual effects people, and there were polite responses like, we'll see if we get time. We have more important things to do, like all the visual effects for the movie. So actually, the origamis weren't meant for the Easter eggs, actually. I guess they were just playing there, but once he saw it, he thought of actually adding origami that actually appear like the Mewtwo's, which is actually very interesting. But I'm actually glad he didn't. Okay, next thing is that uh, there were nearly, my god, a thousand effect shots. And supposedly he said that uh, they took around 2,000 effect shots. Excuse me, uh... Okay, it says, there were something like 990 shots. I'm not sure. The thing I'm most proud of it, that most of these kind of films have closer to 2,000 fixed shots. And we nearly have, have, we nearly have what these other movies have. Okay, so this kind of means that Gary Edwards filmed everything that's possible in just a camera with no visual effects, which is actually very clever of him. Very clever of him. And at the bottom of this article, there's this uh, special podcast with Empire Magazine and Gareth Edwards, which uh, which lasts around 56 minutes. And then right here, the time of breath nearly had lightning for Godzilla, which, you know, we, I already showed you a picture. Which was very interesting. Very interesting. And next thing is, the Mewtwo's Dory, I don't know how to really pronounce that word, almost didn't make act. I'm really not sure what Dory or what that word means. It spells D O W R Y. Not exactly sure what that exactly means. So somebody can tell me the definition of switching below. And the uh, input from Andy Circus and Frank Darabont. So I guess they weren't expecting for Andy Circus and Frank Darabont to be in the project. But yeah, that's that very quickly. Um next thing by Jim by Jimmy Kimmel Live, um, which is a famous you know, person in YouTube and also does T V shows. Um, he did this video, or, like, this is one episode called Live Witness News, Godzilla Edition. So, yeah, um, uh, now, supposedly, okay, let's just hear the video. Link in the description below for the video, article, and the, um, uh, art stuff. Anyways, let's hear it. Godzilla had a big weekend at the box office. Godzilla made $93 million this true. weekend here in the United States, and that's on top of $103 million it made internationally. It's yet another in a string of successes for Hollywood's current strategy of never, ever having an original idea again. <laughs> Needless to say, Warner Brothers, they were already working on a Godzilla sequel. In this one, Godzilla organizes a dance competition to save the local community rec center. <laughs> Since America has Godzilla on the brain, though, I thought it would be fun to uh, use that as a topic for a round of Live Witness News. So we went on a Hollywood Boulevard this afternoon and insinuated that Godzilla is based on an actual event. We asked people this question. We asked, considering Godzilla is based on a true story of the giant lizard attack on Tokyo that killed more than 100,000 people in 1954, do you think it's wrong that Hollywood glamorizes this for entertainment? And I will admit, not too many people bit on this one, but some of them did. So a few of them actually did believe that Godzilla happened, and here they are in a special Godzilla-themed edition of Why Witness News. This, okay, this is not actors. These are real people, and these people, they're stupid. Okay, look, look, hear this one, hear this one. Considering Godzilla is based on the true story of a giant lizard attack on Tokyo that killed more than 100,000 people in 1954. Yes, yes, she nodding yes if that actually did indeed happen, even though... She's lying. Do you think it is wrong of Hollywood to glamorize this event for entertainment value? Three, two, one. This is her answer. I think it is. I oh, ha, ha. oh my I god. Mean, it... That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. Seriously, you gotta be kidding me. You're saying Godzilla exists and in... oh, my god. Anyways, let's continue hearing this. It affects the people that were affected, and then there's the people who. Passed away during that time, so it's kind of oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. God, open slots gonna send us back to the Stone Age. You're hiding something up there, like they're glamorizing their death instead of making a really cool action movie. It's it is a very cool action movie because it didn't actually happen. So, kind of disrespectful to the people, you know. That
Are you saying Pacific Rim actually happened? Wow, nice. That had died and their families, so. Oh, stupid. Do you think it is wrong that Hollywood glamorizes Here we go on our one. this event for entertainment purposes? Yes, because... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. It, it's a travesty. It uh, portrays death, sadness, loss. Uh, uh, Hollywood glamorizes a lot of things that just shouldn't be. Because uh, maybe what really happened is properly portrayed and it can probably disrespect some folks out there. <sighs> hmm. Wow. So, do you support the bill before Congress that would allocate... This is lame, look. Six hundred million dollars to equip the U.S. Navy with anti-reptile capabilities? Yes. How come? He's gonna send us back to Stone Age. Because anything that we can do to protect our nation, we gotta do. So you, do you feel like a, a Godzilla att attack again is a real possibility? That's the man upstairs. Mm. Seriously? No. Do you believe these creatures are caused by global warming? Actually, I do. Like global warming, uh, pollution, uh, you know, we don't know. There's so many mysteries. Hi, scientist person who thinks he's super smart by incorporating global warming into the subject. Under the sea, you know, a lot less monster. Even though you think Godzilla's real. Like, the, like big, uh, big animal, I think it's Bigfoot. Yeah, things like that. Bigfoot lives in the water? I'm gonna search that on Wikipedia, maybe even... Yeah, I'm gonna search that on Wikipedia. They all exist, but we just can't see it. The human eye can't see it. Considering God's... Then how come they exist? Stella is big. This one's the best. This one's the best. First of all, her reaction. Second of all, she is questioning if they're lying. Perfect. Thank you, God, that there's somebody who thinks that Godzilla didn't happen. Thank you. Based on the true story of a giant lizard attack in Tokyo, where more than 100,000 people died in 1954, do you think it is wrong that Hollywood glamorizes this event for entertainment value? Uh, is Godzilla real? Um, yeah. Uh, um, then I guess so, because, like, if he hurt a lot of people, like, why would he want to do that? And why would they want to make it seem, like, real and stuff and, like, nice? Are you worried about it? Oh, there's that man in the background who talks about global warming and thinks he's super smart, even though he thinks that Godzilla's actually happened. Godzilla attack? Aren't they extinct? Got up so. Um, well, there was a an attack in Cloverfield in 2008. Uh, Seriously, how can you believe the attack in Cloverfield in 2008? That was in New York. What city is that? If that's New York, then she would know about I it. Thought, I thought, I thought, wait, is Godzilla like a dinosaur? Of course she is. Next thing, Godzilla and Creation, the animalistic and masculine kaiju monster design FX Wire. Yeah, that's the whole entire title. Technically, for in a nutshell, the title means the visual effects for the new Godzilla movie. Yeah. And, you know, they don't really show any footage, but I guess this is considered a feature, right? I guess you can say. But yeah, let's just hear this video. And, yeah. Link to trip below. Too loud. There we go. Hi, I'm 
like Seymour from fxguide.com for a while, looking at the tech of the making of the King of Zillas, the mighty Godzilla. Godzilla is a huge, solitary, and even noble figure, almost oblivious to man, a metaphor for nuclear horror. And he's one of cinema's greatest monsters. Director Gareth Edwards was faced with the task of modernising the classic, but in a way that was much more respectful to the past than perhaps the 1998 Roland Emmerich film, which depicted a more iguana-like creature. Initially, Godzilla's look was going to be very much based on nature, on real animals. But Edwards wanted to allow Godzilla to act and express emotion. So visual effects studio MPC animated the new Godzilla with enough human traits to deliver a narrative and still be one of history's most impressive monsters. But it wouldn't be a Godzilla movie without him taking some heat from the military and fighting off some pretty serious threats. Definitely. The climax of the film takes place in San Francisco. Spoiler! But Edwards wanted to shoot as much real footage as he possibly could. For example, the iconic halo jump into the city, while CG was certainly added. All the base photography of the troops was real. Shot that was... I, I actually didn't need that. With a real parachute team. Hmm, they actually did use a real parachute. Team. That's pretty and Similarly, the arrival in the city of the Mutos and Godzilla used as much real footage as the director could shoot, which helps add realism to some very unnatural creatures and give them a scale. This newest Godzilla is the largest he's ever been, but unlike the current trend in big effects films, the director... And, and if Godzilla 2014 didn't got released, then this is new footage. Because right off, it's an extended clip whenever... Um, Godzilla roars through the smoke in Chinatown or whatever. He gets out of the smoke. You see his whole entire body. And that's when his face is all pissed off. It looks like he puts his arm on the floor. His arms on the floor. Then that's when he goes up just like a bear. And that's when he roars. That's new footage if Godzilla 2014 didn't got released yet. Holds back what this massive creature can do until the end of the movie. And even then, Godzilla is only really shot from realistic camera angles, often below looking up. The team worked out that at this size, if he swung his tail, he would actually reach supersonic speeds. The character is just that much bigger than we've ever seen him before. Don't forget to subscribe for more behind-the-scenes action. I'm Mike Seymour for Wired. Okay, that's about it. So, yeah, link for all of these awesome stuff. So... To sum it all up, we got the two pictures of the awesome early keyframe art. We got the seven secrets from Godzilla by the director Gareth Edwards. Live Witness News Godzilla Edition and the um, visual effects of Godzilla 2014. So that kind of sums it up. That's kind of Godzilla 2014 information, a little bit of sequel, a little bit. Actually, this isn't, this isn't even sequel information, actually. But, you know, pretty misleading on what I said in the beginning. But anyways, and for this video, subscribe, like, and comment. This is Mother Kaiju, signing out.